yeah. Uh. Woo. Man, forget this job, dog. Yeah. Uh, working this graveyard shift, I hate it. Uh -huh. Six in the morning, I'm off, I made it. When I get home, I'ma make this clear. First thing I'ma drink is a Rainier beer. Yeah. I ain't no lush. Shut up. Hello, it's Adam Morrison. When it comes to top-tier contracting, my go-to choice is McGilvery Environmental. I know a thing or two about excellence, and that's exactly what you'll find with Kip McGilvery and his team. They're not just any contractor. They're the best in Spokane and North Idaho. From start to finish, they ensure your project is completed with the highest quality results. With years of experience and expertise, they handle it all. New construction, meticulous repairs, asphalt paving for residential and commercial properties, excavation, and even environmental remediation. So why wait? Reach out to Kip McGilvery Environmental today by calling 208-556-6384 for your free estimate. Don't forget to mention my name, Adam Morrison, and experience the difference McGilvery Environmental brings to the table. Again, that's 208-556-6384, McGilvery Environmental. My number one choice for all my contracting needs. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is proudly sponsored by New Love Coffee, serving exceptional coffee while supporting Gonzaga Athletics through their partnership with the Zags Collective. New Love Coffee is a specialty coffee company with three locations in Kennelly Yards, North Spokane, in Liberty Lake, Washington, offering crafted coffee beverages, tea, and delicious hand pies from Bean and Pie. Committed to quality, all their coffee is single origin and freshly roasted at the original Liberty Lake location. Here's the exciting part. You can now order their freshly roasted coffee online with every purchase supporting the Zags Collective's mission to uplift Gonzaga student athletes. Try their half decaf blend, a perfect combination of medium roasted decaf and light roasted African coffee. Ideal for espresso, pour over, or cold brew at home. Coffee ships fresh every Thursday, so place your order today at newlovecoffeeandzagscollective.com. And fill your mornings while making a difference for the Zags. The podcast intro song is Get Up by Jinx Universe. Listen to his music on Spotify and follow him on social media at I am Jinx Universe. This graveyard shift, I hate it. Uh -huh. Six in the morning, I'm off, I made it. When I get home, I'ma make this clear first. Welcome day. back to the perimeter, season four, episode four, presented by McGilvery Environmental, New Love, New Love Coffee, and Idaho Central Credit Union. Uh coming off a terrific season opener um in the Spokane Arena. Sold out, air quotes, close. I mean, there was a few empty seats, but I think they got twelve thousand in there, which is terrific. Um Against a really good Baylor team, ranked eighth in the country. We were ranked sixth. Um, and kind of just blew the game wide open. I was a little bit surprised at the final score line. Um, what's that, 38? Yeah, 38 point victory. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the line was. We don't talk about gambling much on this, but I know it wasn't 38 or 20 or 15. It was probably like four. Right. Something in that in that range. Um just a wild uh, game, well executed. Lots of stuff to unpack in this episode. Who started, who played minutes, how the rotations worked out. Um, you know, I thought defensively overall we were terrific. Um, it gives us um, a different look. I'll talk about that, kind of our scheme defensively, what we can kind of do as the season progresses. But you were there last night, obviously, as well. Um it's just so cool when we have these bigger games mm -hmm. in the arena. Yeah. Now the the kennel obviously is a special place, but I think it's nice for the non season ticket holders. I've talked about this in multiple episodes and multiple seasons to have an opportunity to go to a game. Um and I think it just uh, proves how much support this community really has for the team cuz we were talking to some of the Baylor radio guys before now, do you think it's going to be sold out? And they're like, we're like, yeah, we're pretty sure it's going to be like 200 short, which is still a really good number. Mm -hmm. Like, really? You know what I mean? But it's, yeah, it's like the only gig in town, man. It's like this, people love this team and the style. Yeah. Um, to be able to see that um, happen on opening night and then perform so well is really terrific. I think we're starting to um, be really comfortable in the building as well. So there's no fear of, um, shooting in it and, and atmosphere and all that stuff mm -hmm. 
Because before it was legitimate. It was just a different vibe in the arena. And, um, I can understand why Fuey didn't like playing in there. Yeah. Because we had some barn burners back in the past. But now it's, uh, I think it's like that stuff's all solved. I also think it's really important to play non conference games in there that are versus a team that like are from far away. Like yeah. it's just, it was just packed with Zags fans. Or mm -hmm. if, if there was any Baylor fans there, there were there were few, or maybe family. And, yeah, uh, or just local, random. Yeah. I went to Baylor. You know what I mean? That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. I saw some people on the front row and wearing Baylor. It's like, I wonder if they traveled for this. Or are they, you know, hey, I went to Baylor, and, and then I moved to Spokane. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For a job or whatever. That stuff obviously happens. Um, but, yeah, it, it, the first half was um, interesting because – you know, when we first come out, and I talk about it on my broadcast, and I, I, I mentioned this on this show too, is I always look to see how they defend Graham E.K. first. Mm -hmm. Are you going to double team? Um, are you going to play straight up, obviously? Are you going to force him to his right? Obviously, he's a lefty. Are you going to say, hey, maybe we give up, you know, a lot from Graham, but we play more out on the perimeter. I think it's just a, a, a good barometer of what you're going to see. And it was the same thing with Drew Timmy, and it's the same with Shimmy. You know what I mean? All of our great bigs, how are you going to defend our inside presence? Um, because that kind of dictates how you rotate defensively. And they played, I was kind of surprised, surprised a little bit. They played, uh, they switched everything, um, which is unique in the sense that, you know, with two true bigs, Omiar is kind of a, a combo, but the Ojiwanu, if I thought hopefully I'm saying his name right, but it's like a true center. Mm -hmm. And they were still switching with him on dribble handoff and, and um, ball screen action. So that kind of was surprising to me a little bit. But then every time there was a catch, there was a top side, which I means they're taking away middle, forcing baseline, and a, uh, double team from the bottom, we call it black. Um, and what we did well early, even though we didn't make shots, we started off 0 for 4 from 3, mm -hmm. is every time Graham caught it, he got that skip pass. And it's either a swing swing or one skip pass shot. And that's what you're going to give up defensively, and you know that going in. Mm. Um, but I was proud of our guys for recognizing it and not – um, forcing the issue and still throwing it into Graham. And then he did a good job of, you know, getting high hands and, and skipping it early. Because mm -hmm. it's frustrating as a player. And obviously I was not an inside player, but I was a player of either getting double teamed or, you know, boxing one or severe help on you. It's It sucks at the start. You're like, ah, oh, man, yeah. I want to get going. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to fight the urge to try to, like, force stuff mm -hmm. instead of let the game kind of flow, let foul trouble happen and – breakdowns and all that stuff because everybody's plan at the start is going to be good and solid so to start the game we got really good shots obviously missed our first four threes um, but then Dusty Stromer missed his first but then reeled off three in a row um, which were terrific and they were off swing swing skips and he just had a nice uh, energy about himself off the bench and really got us going. I mean, we were up 8-1. They called timeout. Um, and it kind of just set the tone, um, obviously, um, to start the game. But in a really good team that is going to challenge you, you want to have those mini-type runs. Hmm. Um, you know, so I was uh, I was pleased with the start. Crowd was great. Um, and then they had a nice little run uh, to take a – I think it was a 10-8 10, 10 lead. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think Dusty hit his last three – and we go up 11-10, and I think that was the last time they led the basketball game, which is crazy to even think, because um, they won. They led 1-0, and then 10-8. Yeah, and yeah. that was the that was the lead change or the times ahead. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, our our guys' effort early was terrific. We got to talk about the starting lineup, right? Obviously, I was a little bit not surprised, but um, I thought Ajayi was going to start over Ben Gregg mm -hmm. just out of what we've seen and heard. Um, but it actually makes sense. Ben Gregg, um, you know, playing for just like three, he's been here for four years, but about three years in the rotation. Mm -hmm. 
got into the starting lineup last year, had some big games for us, big time moments. So it's like, yeah, he kind of deserves that. He's a senior. I know mm-hmm. Jay is too, but he wasn't here last year, obviously. So when that happens, like, oh, that makes sense. You know what I mean? It wasn't even like I was like, you know, trying to formulate a, a reason why or how. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's, they're both going to play about the same amount of minutes. Um, you know, and then I can't, you know, I want to pat myself on the back, but I told you they're probably just going to play those three guards and start. That's yeah. what they did, battle. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. You know what I mean? Hickman and Nembhard. But when they did that in the, against the USC, the USC scrimmage game, I was like, oh, yeah, this kind of makes sense. I mean, this is easier to navigate and battle's a big enough wing and he's mm. capable enough. We'll talk about his game, his second half run that he had. Um, and then obviously Graham, but that's probably what they're going to do all season long. Maybe switch Ben and Ajayi every once in a while or something like that. Um but I think that's a pretty set in stone lineup. Um, six guys, obviously five star, but those six will be kind of pretty much considered starters. Mm-hmm. I don't see Braden ever starting uh, unless they want to go two bigs, and that's not a knock. He was terrific. I'm just saying, just size wise or whatever, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then Dusty, I don't think starts over Battle, right? Um, right. So uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up because the first two episodes or whatever, three episodes were kind of like, who's going to start? What's the rotations? And I was really looking for that last night, obviously with it being the start of the season. And then obviously such a big time game, a resume type game. And I've talked about that in the past. I know it's early, but you know, there's one of those games, no matter how good or bad the season goes, still have a win against a team that's probably going to finish in the top half of the big 12 and make yep. the NCAA tournament. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they have, you know, terrific backcourt. Jeremy Roach scored 1,400 points at Duke. The Edgecombe kid didn't have a great game, but he's supposed to be a top five pick. He's the one that had that uh, f- fantastic dunk. The Olmier kid from Miami was terrific last night for them. Um, you know, and I actually like uh, the right kid was good as well, number one. So, I mean, this is a good basketball team. It's just I think they got buzzsawed and – um, didn't shoot the basketball well, but, um, you know, I liked how he brought in Ajayi probably at the 15 minute mark right after the, or before or after just where, how it kind of falls the first TV, mm-hmm. same with, uh, Dusty and same with Braden. Um, so yeah, starting wise, I think that's in rotation wise, it's probably a pretty in- good indicator that's going to play. So it's eight guys, yeah, which makes sense. I, mean, that's, I was like I was thinking last night. I was just like, well, we didn't see much else other than an eight-man rotation, yeah. and that's what few yeah. runs, right? Yeah, that's what we and we've talked about it at length. That I think that's just the right way to do it. It's easier. Um, I thought Dusty in that first half, especially, was terrific. Three of five from downtown, really got the crowd into it. Was flying around uh, uh, on the glass, had six rebounds as well. Ended up with four point, or excuse me, eleven points total. Had a dunk in the second half on a dump down, but really kind of ignited us from um, three point land, especially in the um, first half and starting zero for four. Um, and then we go six for sixteen. So then what is that? Uh, six for twelve the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. So he got us kind of going um, with those three threes early and it was nice to see him miss one early and still look for his shot and step into it and be you know anticipating a jump shot not just kind of catching and then oh shit i gotta shoot it you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like there's a difference and i know it sounds weird but you gotta like it's like stepping into you know a fastball instead of like waiting for it you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. anticipating it and he did that and really uh sparked us i thought Braden Huff in the first half was absolutely terrific. Um, the kid's so good, man. I'm again. He plays fifteen and a half, almost sixteen minutes, fifteen fifty-five, and I'm still like, man, he should play more. But <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna be the lone protest or the lone voice. Um, but finishes with fourteen point seven eleven, you know, and just really had great touch inside. Had some weird. Uh, kind of fortunate bounce buckets which was great but like balls bounced to him he had that one where nolan went down and got absolutely volleyball slapped mm-hmm. on that layup attempt but then it just bounced right to Braden and we lay it up so mm-hmm. oh it's going our night it's going good <laughs> for us you know what i mean like fast break 
get that out of here. Boom, uh, layup. He was terrific. Um, yeah, it was just a great first half, and it was kind of a... The Perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Doing good? Thank you again. It was just a great first half, and it was kind of a not a super surprise. And I hate saying that because then it's like, well, what were your expectations for these guys? Like, well, you don't expect them to be up 19 on a really good defensive team, up on the glass as well. Mm. Um, Baylor last year, here was the stat Huddy had, it was a really good one. They averaged 13 offensive rebounds per game that was number one in the country. So the glass was a big factor for us going into it. Um, we end the game plus 13 overall, yeah, which is absolutely terrific. But it's one of those games where if you look at the last two Baylor, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two Baylor games, obviously the national championship and the one we lost in South Dakota or whatever during right after COVID or whatever, mm-hmm. we just got pushed around physically. And I think, that was one of the biggest messages for our guys going into the game was we can't get punked. That's yeah. the best way to put it. And our guys really responded to it. Um, we flew around, had 16 offers, offense rebounds themselves. Um, you know, face boxed on certain guys. Our guards rebounding was terrific. Um, Nemhard with five. Hickman with six. Battle with five. I put Dusty on the perimeter type. He has six off the bench. Mm. Um, that's what you got to have in those type of games when they got bigs um, and super athletic wings. Your guards who get usually a free run, right? Because your guys out on the perimeter usually mm-hmm. shoots it. You get to like maneuver and chop your steps. You know what I mean? And, and like time your jump, right? And go get it. And then conversely with that, you get a chance to, to start the break right away. So like it's a double like good play. Obviously, you get securing the rebound is obvious, but not having an outlet and just pushing um, allows you to get out and transition. So I thought for the most part, our guys really battled on the glass. And then, like I said, going up 19, it was like, okay, this is a really good Baylor team, but they're fresh faces. And that's how it's going to be for everybody um, for the most part in college basketball. Um, They're going to make a run. So they come out, they cut it to 11, I believe early in that second half. And they ran uh, like a full court man press, which was smart. And we had some careless uh, turnovers or just bad. It just got us out of our rhythm, which is smart. But you can only press for a certain amount of time and against good teams in mm-hmm. college basketball. I don't care who you are. It's just if you're worth anything, you'll be able to break a press eventually. You know what I mean? At least get good opportunities. So the whole idea, my point is, is just to speed you up and make you play faster, like you're not going to get steals like you will in, in high school or middle school, right? But you just want them to maybe speed up and, you know, take a bad shot. But it's, oh, it's open. Uh, okay, that's who we wanted to take the shot out of rhythm where there's no sets. Mm-hmm. Um, but once they made that run, we uh, countered it with like a, I think it was a 16 to 2 run. Something like that. Yeah. It was something, uh, it was 16 to 2, and our guys just were flying around. Um, Again, defensively, Ben Gregg was all over the floor in the second half. He finishes with nine points, uh, three for four, three for five from the free throw line, three rebounds, um, plus 17, plus minus. But just in 16 minutes, Ajayi uh, finished with nine, eight rebounds, was terrific, plays 21 minutes. So I think that's those guys are obviously going to split time. Um I think they're good enough to play together as well or, you know, active enough is what I mean, Mm -hmm. Um, like live body. Um, But I think they're going to give Ben the starting nod. Uh, I don't know. I think they'll just maybe flip-flop it, and I I think they're both mature enough kids to not really care because they both played about the same amount. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So you get, you know, your three, fours, I'm going to call them tweeners, kind of. Uh, they, um, you know, have a positive game is what I'm trying to say. Like win their battle, basically, mm. against who they're going against. Um, and then, like I mentioned, Dusty Stromer was terrific, 11.6 rebounds. And then Braden Huff with uh, 14. So 25, 34 off the bench. Um it was actually 42, but 34 with your main guys off the bench, mm-hmm. um, which is absolutely terrific. Uh, yeah, I just that second half was just fun because it got where we go on that 16 to two run and really blow the game over. It was like, okay, we can kind of relax now and just um, have fun. We were still playing hard, obviously, but it was like guys were knocking down threes. Battle ended up having a better game. Plays 30 minutes, goes four for 10, has 12 points, but he made f- those three threes in a row. It was a cool moment for him and cool, really cool moment for our crowd. Yeah. And it was kind of a, hey, welcome to Zag Nation. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, hey, all right, we like you. You make a jump shot. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, um, you know, because nobody's ever, se- I mean, you've seen him at other teams, but you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to kind of yeah. have your moment, and it's good to get it out of the way early, too, because he wasn't playing good at all. He was the only guy that, and it's not a knock, but he's the only guy when you look down, like, well, he's the only one that's not playing good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then I thought Graham was terrific in the second half. He wasn't great in the first. He plays 21, 21 minutes, but goes 6 for 12, 15 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, plus 27. Really had a nice stretch where he had that up and under. Um, then he had that little, you know, like sweeping, like, 8-footer off the glass. It was like a hook. Yeah. Got a couple and ones off rebounds, <clears throat> you know, had his where he's yelling at officials and kind of yelling at guys, which I like to see. I like it because it's kind of fired up and he gets going a little bit. It's good for our club. Um, so if you really just break down this game, every single guy, those eight guys, played good, and that's legitimate. Nemhard doesn't shoot a great, goes two for six, but has 11 assists, yeah. only two turnovers, right? So, like, <clears throat> and I think this year that's going to be his role more which I think is better suited. Not that he can't score the basketball, but I think he's more of a smaller guard, obviously. Let's go find guys and get people involved, and I think he likes that role, and he's really good at it. Um, yeah, I was I was just obviously super impressed, not by the score, but more by the energy, the execution. Defensively, we ran a 2-3 zone a couple times. Um, we were switching. We double-teamed on some... Uh, Ball screen cover, like we kind of showed everything. I think we have the ability to switch a lot of actions too, which I think is will help. And I, if the people that have listened to this um, podcast have understood, like if you can switch most actions and guard, it really makes it tough for teams. And I think you become elite defensively if you do it the right way. Mm. Um, but like I mentioned, plus 13 on the glass. We go 13 to 31 from three. I think that's was skewed a little bit because there was some, you know, end of the game three. So you yeah. maybe shave three of three or four off of that. We only shoot fifty percent, but that's forty one as a as a club or four forty two essentially is really good. Um, but I think the biggest number for me, especially early in the season, you know, it's one game we don't want to overreact. But we're when we're really good, we're re- like this number is the highest is twenty five assists. Mm. Ball was pinging. Yeah. Guys are getting touches. Guys are scoring in bunches, but it's not sticking. Um, only 11 turnovers. I can only think of like th- three quote unquote bad turnovers. So, like the ones that we did have were end line turnovers, yeah. charges. Like sometimes you're like, okay, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. these, these plain hoops, you know, but them hard had one, like a an okay turnover. Like, for example, when I mean end line, like battle tried to go back door. In the first half, and he had a sliver, and Nemhard tried to hit him, but they stole it. But the like we're back, and they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, we almost got a back door, and you got to respect it. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. want your guard to have the freedom to like try to make that pass. Um, I think Stromer was the only one that had like two, three bad ones where he was just like kind of staring guys down, and they tipped it, and you know those are the ones where a few he like jumps and like <laughs> screams <laughs> right. at him. Yeah. But it's he's right though. It's like come on, man. Um, and Dusty played really good. Um, but just overall, energy was terrific. Eight steals. Um, got to the free throw line, 8 of 13. You know, defensively, we hold them to 
uh, three for 21 from three. Mm. Now, I must say, like, if we played that team again, it uh, no doubtedly would be a much closer matchup. Um, they have new pieces. Three for 21 is obviously not good, but that's I, fortunate. I hate saying lucky because it's not luck, but also, like, usually clubs don't shoot that bad. The mm -hmm. Edgecombe kid is supposed to be a top five pick. Played terrible. He's the one that had the dunk, like I mentioned, two for 11. Only has 4.7 rebounds. He's going to be better. He's supposed to be like a literally. There were 16 NBA scouts at that game. Really? By the way. Yeah. 16. Um, watching our guys, everybody, but he was probably one of the, one of the radar guys. Mm -hmm. He played bad, you know, and then you just look at um, some of their other numbers. But, you know, I was just super impressed, happy for our guys. It's always nervous to come out in a big game like that, especially at home. And with all the talk this year, with all the depth and all the stuff, like just to go out and play really good. Now you kind of get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds funny, but you just get it out of the way. And now you can just go let it rip. And um, it's really cool when it's in there at Spokane Arena too, man. I just, being from Spokane, obviously you are as well. Yeah, It's a lot of history there just as, as a town, but to have Gonzaga start moving into that history more mm. so because there was a long time when we wouldn't play in there and it was just not good. Um, or the games weren't, they weren't fun. Right. Like these are fun games. This is a fun, this is the most, I mean, besides the Kentucky game, like yeah, this was, it, the, the atmosphere in there was great. Like the, I was sitting right be in front of the student section mm -hmm. and it, I just, I guess I've never sat that close to a game before, but it, how fast and how this yeah. you could just feel the energy from the players too they just were non-stop and they were like there was a play where ben greg was just he he tracked down the ball and like like fell on the ground and swiped at the ball and then it went off a baylor yeah, guy dove for it yeah. yeah and he had played what 15 minutes 16 minutes, 16 minutes and he, but he was gassed you could tell mm -hmm. that he was like just putting his all into this game and they, I was just, it was a really cool moment. It was, it was terrific to watch, you know, made me feel proud to be a alum, obviously, but just the energy, how much we're sharing the ball. Um, we're going to be dangerous this year and it's not an overreaction to one game. It's just looking at our depth, um, our ability defensively. Like I just mentioned, if we can control physicality and glass, um, would be really special. We barely talked about Nolan Hickman because <laughs> gives us 17, three of six, but he's playing with a, a swag. Oh, gosh, yeah. And, and you know, maybe it's overreaction or too early, but maybe not starting him in that USC game kind of woke him up. Mm. And I know it was an exhibition, but it was kind of like, whoa. And then he played, remember, he played terrific in that second half. He had 12 points. Yeah. And then obviously Wagner Pacific or whoever the hell the team we just played is a NAI, but he was like rolling. He was making floaters and he had mm -hmm. like a little bounce. And then, you know, this last game, he hit, he shot that one in the second half and he just like stared at it. You know what I mean? Looked at the bench and was going and like, that's when you know a guy's rolling. Mm -hmm. He hit that floater against the zone in the first half. That's a hard shot. It's a 12 foot floater on the baseline. He wasn't making that last year. Right. You know, he had a great season. He was after 14, shot 41%. Mm -hmm. Second team all WC. Great, but he just wasn't making that consistently. He's made a ton of floaters already. Yeah. Um, so if he can keep it going, um, because his energy is infectious, you know what I mean? He's he's kind of a quiet kid, but when he's bouncing around, it's like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Totally, when, yeah. You know, when you're around somebody that's just naturally introverted and they're kind of extroverted a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is cool. <laughs> totally. You know what I mean? Um so again, I can't say it enough. It was a terrific game. Um, if you look at all the stats. We won most of the battles. Um, they got to the free throw line a little bit more, but I thought the, I thought honestly the game was uh, well officiated. I don't remember one bad call. I thought maybe the the first one, Graham's first foul was a bad one. Other than that, I thought both teams had you know, challenges at the rims that they let go, all that stuff. I just thought it was a you know we didn't really think about the officials, so yeah. that means it was good. They let them play for sure. They let them play, but they called the right. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, it's hard because. Part of the issue with college basketball against casuals that used to be bigger fans, and they're right, is like it's too physical. Mm. And sometimes the old people, are, well, that's how it's supposed to be. It's like to a certain degree, we mm. want to watch skill. Right. I don't want to watch 55 to 52, but also it can't be an NBA game where it's 108, 18 to 115, and there's 
you know, it's foul every time and you can't touch anybody. Like that's part of college basketball. There's an actual post game and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's a smaller floor essentially because the line's in closer and there's no defense of three seconds. Right. So it is an old, it's an older game, but you need a balance. Um, and I thought last night, you know, the pace was great for both teams even though we got the better of them, I thought Baylor plays with a terrific pace. They got some athletes, man. Holy smokes. Yeah, they do. And to just put it in context, like how far this program has gone, I mean, obviously, people listen to the show, obviously, college basketball fans, but he took over that program that had like a in house murder. Yeah. Okay. And like where it probably was discussed do we need to have college, you know, do we need to have athletics at this university or do we need to like just cut basketball? Mm -hmm. Like, which would, if you're in the AD at the time, like, yeah, do we even like, or let's take five years off and clean this up. Mm -hmm. He takes that over in 20 years. Now they're a perennial final four candidate every year with a national championship win. Yeah. Like, and he does it the right way. He's not, there's no, you never hear anything slimy about Scott Drew recruiting, mm -hmm. how he treats his players. I think he's had, the stat last night, he's had somebody drafted, I think, in the first round in the last, like, decade plus. So then they're, do they're it's doing it with talent and coaching. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Any development. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, every year, the one or two guys gets drafted first round. So, like, if you go there, like, hey, man, he's going to coach you, but mm -hmm. you're going to have a chance to play at the next level. Yeah. Style of play. So, like, I have the utmost respect for that program and to put it on him like that respectfully i think it felt good for Fuey and the staff because obviously we've lost two um noah doesn't have revenge for the national championship game either oh. you know and so right. when you hear that too it's like oh revenge like nah the only the only uh <laughs> player that was on the team that there that year was ben greg so. yeah and it they yeah. won the national championship like there's yeah. no revenge from that you right know I and mean? it's just yeah. it is what it is but um all in all a terrific night um, fun atmosphere, high level basketball both ways. Uh, obviously, we played way better in that second half and just blew the game open. They got Arkansas coming up, so they kind of wait. They didn't wave the white flag, but probably like, okay, guys, it's a <laughs> tough one. And we got to understand, and we'll talk about it next year. But when we go to, we're probably going to play them in Dallas. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to have better officiating for them, yeah. and it's going to be raucous, right? Mm -hmm. So like, it's one of those when you're blowing a team out. And you got to play them again, and they're good. Mm -hmm. The next year, you're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> get ready. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> totally. you know, um, but it uh, it was fun, and and again, great start. Can't overreact a lot, but it's it, it is different that uh, we play a top ten team. It hasn't been like that all the time. Nineteenth straight opening win for the program. Wow. Last one with loss was my freshman year. <laughs> I was like, Huddy benched on there. I was like. <laughs> I didn't need to hear that. I just, we lost to St. Joe's oh. uh, my freshman year in the garden. That was a tough one for us. But um, that's a, another credible, incredible, excuse me, stat for Gonzaga. Because it's not been all cupcakes. The no. year we went to Jalen's year, we played Kansas oh, yeah, and okay. beat them in mm -hmm. Fort Myers, Florida, when that was about the only state that was doing non-COVID stuff. And right. So that tournament went. Um, Wasn't last year we played on the, the, the freighter? Was that last year, the, the uh, down in San Diego? No, I think we played to open the season. Yeah, was that not to open the season? No, oh. we played. No, that wasn't. That was we played Yale to open the season oh, last year, which right. was just kind of a scary one. Yeah, I mean they're they're usually go to the NCAA too, and they win the sweet. Did they win here in Spokane? Yeah, they won yeah. here in Spokane. Yeah, yeah, they're good. So yeah, they're like, good, yeah. it was like, well, okay, let's make sure you guys that. <laughs> Are like oh Yale, it's a bunch of book nerds. Like ah, they're pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they go, they win their league. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all in all, terrific night. Um, now moving on to Arizona State. Um, curious with them. Again, when I say this, you got to say it the right way, but because I don't want to sound lazy, but like doing prep for some of these teams is so hard now because the the portal. You're right. And there's so much turnover. That when you look at a guy's numbers, like, okay, he averaged 15 in the SOCON or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, is it going to transfer? Or, or, and then you're like, okay, like, is he a fifth-year guy? So, like, and he's on his fourth school, so is he really that good? I mean, is he, is he just a piece? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you look at these Arizona State statistics, you have to, like, put it in context. They were 
what was their record last year? Uh, eight and twelve conference, five and five at home. So what is that? Their overall record last year was fourteen and eighteen. Fourteen and eighteen had a bad year, obviously. Bobby Hurley's the coach. Obviously, Dan Hurley's brother coaching royalty. Their dad was a legend in New York or upstate or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, high school coach, like legendary. If you want to watch anybody, and this is not a knock, if you want to watch anybody ever yell at officials, go to watch this Arizona State game. He goes absolutely bonkers on officials <laughs> Okay, all game long. I'll watch for that. I think he's been ejected three, at, at least three times in his coaching career at Arizona State, at least. Wow. And, yeah, he gets <laughs> after officials. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. High-level coach. I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not knocking his ability to, to coach, but he, I mean – like f and screams like officials all game long and so it's it's interesting to see if this one gets turns a little bit if he goes ballistic i want to see a george brett moment i would like to see a, an ejection in the kennel um not that i'm rooting for it but it'd be, it'd be fun to talk about and fun to see um they played duke which is kind of a weird um like an exhibition? Yeah, it played in an exhibition, got waxed, like 103-47. And so I was, when I saw that score, I was like, ooh. But then you're also like, okay, it's obviously an exhibition. New guys, Duke is Duke. Mm-hmm. And you're also like, if they made a trip all the way there to do an exhibition, were they, were they like, I know this sounds bad, but not really, but did they have like a trip to wherever you know what i'm saying yeah. they go see stuff and we're kind of distracted but knowing it's just an exhibition so my point is like arizona state has a name yeah okay they're in the big 12 this move there they were fairly decent in the pack 10 pack 12 excuse me for years like middle of the pack mm-hmm. sometimes had better years than not it's a legitimate team it's a legitimate game to have um we're gonna have to play good to win but we should be favored by 10 plus yeah so that's the best um preview i can give they have some returning players but it's so difficult to tell <laughs> and so um uh, yeah i think w- i mean it's in the, they they open up tonight against idaho state yeah which i mean even if they i mean when if they win that game i don't, I don't even really t- says much but mm-hmm. like it's I, the question i was i'm curious about is like after this humongous win against baylor yeah how do you that's a good like point. The guys come back from that like, because you don't beat a lot of teams by 38, 38 points. Yep. And well, I think what I'll say to that is like, obviously, it's going to be, it was an emotional win, but we get time in between. And then also, like, guys are going to be hyped to be back in the kennel. Yeah. So I think that helps mm-hmm. for that to counter that possibility. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel good about this game, not just because we, blew the breaks off of Baylor I'd say that even if it was a closer game but I just think we're uh, more talented but when you play a big conference team and this is not just saying it to say it they have big conference athletes so they always have a chance obviously we're more skilled it's not like we don't have athletes but my point is like even a bottom half of the big excuse me the big 12 is going to have big 12 athletes Mm -hmm. so we obviously need to be prepared play well but um i like us going forward in this game yeah i'm more curious to see how hard they play because of the score line i saw against that duke i know it's an exhibition but that's a big big number um and then i'll be curious tonight to watch not watch i'll check the box I'm not gonna watch Arizona State, Idaho State, lying to you, lying to you people. If he said I was, like, no way I'm turning that TV on. Um, <laughs> seriously, um, I'll check the box and, and and maybe watch a a breakdown of it, and that's that's about it. But just to see who their guys are um, compared to last year, because we have the overalls. I mean, the overalls um, stats from last year shot 31 from three, not great. 42 overall from. Um, field goal terrible um minus seven on the glass and this is not i'm not knocking i'm just telling you what it is and it only averaged 70 Mm. points a game last year so we're gonna uh obviously have to play solid to win but we should be favored by a a bunch Mm -hmm. and hopefully it's a you know high energy game and our guys continue to play well again nolan hickman was terrific 
Braden Huff was terrific. Dusty Stromer, welcoming sign to see him shoot the ball well. Mm. Um, I know it's early, but you want him making shots and flying around the six rebounds I really liked as well. Um, he needs to have a big year for us. He needs to have a year where he's an X factor off the bench, and he has that ability. Mm -hmm. um, and when he's looking for a shot and playing with, you know, a pep in a step on the front foot, whatever you want to describe it, he makes it it's so difficult as a as a bench player to cover. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the first home game, but couldn't ask for a better start. You got any uh, listener questions? Yeah, I got a got one listener. question. The Perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor. for a better start you got any uh, listener questions yeah i got a got one listener question from facebook uh it's from mike hugh he asks, and this kind of goes with what happened in yesterday's game mm -hmm. he said because this comes this comes from a week ago with such a deep roster this year do you think the team will play more players to keep up the defensive pressure and i i don't know i yeah yeah it's a good question because in uh, theoretically you know with more depth you can um press or you can mm -hmm. you know you can gamble a little bit more you don't have to worry about foul pressure mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to get them into the bonus but individual foul pressure um kind of goes out the door yeah um i think that that decision to answer his question is based off who you're playing situation of the game i know it sounds like a cop-out but if you're playing a team that's really good against the press you're not going to press right mm -hmm. if you're playing against a team that's really good um you know, against the zone, you're going to run a zone. Yeah. But I think, like, last night, Ben and Ajayi, like, had certain situations, and they do a good job of not, like, pouting. But, like, they would go up and down, like, twice, and then they'd get subbed out. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, man, these kids are such nice kids. I'd have been like, the fuck? You know <laughs> what I mean? And, like, just how I, you know, mm -hmm. I'd just be like, well, I just went up and down the floor twice. Like, but they don't react that way. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think being being deeper, it's it's not even a take. Any, any basketball fan or anybody that watched the game would know that you have a better chance to play harder defensively. But at high level college basketball, you can't just like play with your, you know, your head, your the hair on fire or whatever your head cut off. Yeah. So I think it, the depth helps foul pressures uh, foul trouble situations mm -hmm. more than anything else yeah we're not going to be kentucky of 95 96 that platoons and ended up having 12 guys play in the nba which is a nutty team if you really think about it yeah. but remember those old teams he would go five in five out and he would press the whole game mm -hmm. like literally like an a like that's what i did in au <laughs> like right. when i had a better team was go press the next five press <laughs> you know what i mean then you look up you're up 30 like we didn't even run an offense. We just stole it and laid it up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, it, the depth is great, but I think it's eight-man. And we saw a, a great taste of it last night, and I think I think that's who's going to play the majority of the minutes. Obviously, Inocente has a chance to maybe June, maybe, if there's a weird injury. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that – I can't say – DeAndre or whatever. Is, yeah. I don't think he's ready. I think he's a developmental kid. He's a big frame, and hopefully he stays around because I think he has potential. I like lefties as well. Um, but overall, depth is great, yeah. but I think the rotations were perfect. The minutes were spread out. Let's just talk about that real quick since we're making a big deal about depth. Graham plays 21. So these are the starters. Ben, Greg's, uh, ben Greg plays 16. Nemhard plays 33. Nolan plays 30. Battle plays 30. So you're, as expected, our backcourt is going to play 30-plus, which I think is normal, and, and you can't really complain about that as a player. Yeah. If you're playing 30-plus and you're going to get plenty of opportunities. Um, let's go to our bench guys. Ajayi plays 21, so he plays more than Greg but doesn't start. So then there's the counter to that. As a coaching staff, you can always go, hey, 
you're playing starter minutes. So does it matter if you're coming off the bench? Mm -hmm. And that's a true statement. Um, Dusty plays 20 minutes, 20, almost 21, and Braden plays the, the least amount and plays 15 and a half. And he's that, the second leading scorer, or third leading scorer off by one. But I still wish B Braden would play more. I don't get it, but whatever. Um, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I just, he's so efficient. But there's, there's things defensively I think that teams try to go at him. So I think that uh, makes Fuey and the staff afraid a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, I think overall it was terrific. Obviously, the score proved that, but we got a lot of questions answered rotation-wise. Yeah. I think that's what's going to be, and there might be some slight tweaks. Maybe Dusty starts one game, Ajayi or Ben Gregg start. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, you're going to see those guys who I just mentioned play the majority of the minutes, and we looked pretty athletic. We pr looked pretty deep, and it was a fun opener. Got a tough one. Um Theoretically, against Arizona State, maybe I shouldn't say tough, like a scary one, an unknown scary one, because mm -hmm. they're a Big 12 opponent. And it's cool that they're coming into our building, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to um, catching up with everybody again on the podcast um, after the Arizona State game. Then who do we go into? What is it, like UMass Lowell or something yeah, like UMass, that? Yeah, UMass and then Bucknell and then, then we... And then Atlantis and then it's, yeah. then it's the UConn, Kentucky stretch, isn't it? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, we play Long Beach State, West Virginia, um, oh, then this and this is uh, Atlantis, and then, yeah, yeah UConn, uh, and then Nichols and Bucknell, yeah. UCLA. Oh, so. that'd be a good one, yeah. yeah. That's at the new Clippers one, too. Yeah. Be cool. Well, anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you to McGilvery Environmental, uh, New Love Coffee, uh, Idaho Central Credit Union for sponsoring the show. We won't have it without you. Uh, listen in next time. Thanks. Graveyard shift, I hate it. Uh -huh. Six in the morning, I'm off, I made it. Made it. When I get home, I'ma make this clear. First thing I'ma drink is a rainy beer. Yeah. I ain't no lush. Uh -huh. Shut up, hush. Yeah. This is high zone now. I'ma take this check, put it on me. I'm a much better boss than an employee. Just cause you got time, don't waste time. It's about time. Feel the sunshine. You got time, but don't waste time. It's go time. The podcast intro song is Get Up by Jinx Universe. Listen to his music on Spotify and follow him on social media at I Am Jinx Universe. Produced locally in Spokane, Washington at Spocast.